Атомный подводный крейсер Хабаров к выводу из цеха готов. А чей движение? The Russian Sivyorodvinsk shipyard has launched the first Khabarovsk class 10,000 ton nuclear powered submarine, which represents an entirely new type of strategic warship designed specifically to deploy two M39 Poseidon nuclear armed underwater drones. The procurement of Khabarovsk class is expected to complement investments in expanding the fleet of Borei two class ballistic missile submarines pioneering a second means of delivering mass strategic nuclear attacks by sea. Attending the ship's launch ceremony, Russian Defense Minister Andrei Belusov observed, Today is a significant event for us. The heavy nuclear-powered missile cruiser Khabarovsk is being launched from the slipway of the renowned Sevmash shipyard. Carrying underwater weapons and robotic systems, it will enable us to successfully accomplish missions related to ensuring the security of Russia's maritime borders and protecting its national interests in various parts of the world's oceans," he added. Although the 2M39 Poseidon is already in service, they are currently deployed by only a single warship, the submarine Belograd which is a heavily modified Soviet Oscar II-class cruise missile submarine that was adapted to serve as a carrier for the drones. This served as a stopgap until the significantly more capable and stealthier Khabarovsk-class ships could be brought into service. In late October Russian President Vladimir Putin commented on the development of the Poseidon, noting that it uses a miniaturized version of a submarine nuclear reactor approximately 1% the size. The drones are single-use weapons and are designed to detonate their warheads deep underwater to trigger radioactive tsunamis, which can inflict mass destruction on enemy coasts. Unlike missiles which are launched by the submarines into the air, attacks that rely on detonating warheads under the ocean surface are considered effectively impossible to intercept. Since the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991 Russia has particularly prioritized investments in its strategic nuclear forces, ensuring that they still lead the world in performance in many respects in their capabilities. While the country's conventional force have increasingly lagged behind leading competitors, in particular, the United States, China, and the Koreas, strategic forces have pioneered a range of new capabilities, of which the 2M39 Poseidon and the Khabarovsk-class submarines that deploy them are but one example. Russia was the first to introduce hypersonic glide vehicles into service with the operationalization of the Avangard Intercontinental Range System, with a shorter range derivative of the design reported to have also been developed for the new Orshnik Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile. The 9M730 Burevestnik cruise missile, which was flight tested in late October, is the only nuclear-powered missile type in the world, providing an effectively unlimited range, which further seriously complicates possible missile defense efforts. Operationally, the platform offers Russia several potential advantages. It concentrates an autonomous or semi-autonomous nuclear strike capability in a survivable, nuclear-powered hull capable of long-endurance missions. It complicates adversary detection efforts by operating at depth with a non-standard acoustic and hydrodynamic signature. And it provides a flexible node for strategic signaling when deployed with novel undersea weapons that are not covered by existing arms control regimes. Unlike legacy SSBNs that rely on dispersed patrol areas and multiple launch tubes to ensure survivability, Khabarovsk embodies a concept closer to a modernized mothership model for unmanned undersea weapons. 
In contrast to Western navies that are experimenting with distributing unmanned systems across multiple surface and subsurface platforms, Russia appears to be consolidating a high-value capability into a single, heavily protected asset intended to operate from the Arctic and Pacific theaters where Russian naval forces are already present. Strategically, the appearance of a submarine believed to be capable of launching Poseidon-type nuclear UUVs has immediate implications for regional and alliance maritime planning. It adds a new vector to Russia's undersea deterrent, separate from sea-launched ballistic missiles, and it complicates anti-submarine warfare postures in the Arctic, the North Atlantic, and the Pacific. It may prompt NATO navies to invest further in deep-water acoustic sensors, seabed monitoring networks, and operational concepts specifically designed to detect, classify, and track slow but very long-range autonomous nuclear delivery systems. At the diplomatic and arms control level, associating a manned nuclear submarine with an unmanned, nuclear-powered and nuclear-armed weapon raises renewed questions about escalation management, about the applicability of existing strategic stability arrangements to robotic systems, and about how to treat second-strike underwater drones in future negotiations. No budgetary or industrial details were disclosed at the ceremony beyond the prominent role of SEVMASH, which belongs to the United Shipbuilding Corporation, and the visible presence of top defense and naval officials, indicating that the program is being run under central state control and within the current Russian naval modernization framework. Given the technical complexity of nuclear propulsion, deep water launch systems, and the integration of autonomous nuclear payloads, overall costs are likely to be comparable to other recent Russian nuclear-powered submarines, but no figure has been made public. For now, Khabarovsk has entered its testing phase rather than active operational service, and final acceptance by the Russian Navy will depend on the outcome of sea trials and on the successful completion of Poseidon-related tests, whose latest reactor start was publicly mentioned by President Putin earlier in the week of the rollout. The rollout of the new Russian-made Khabarovsk submarine, therefore, represents more than a routine shipyard milestone. It signals a deliberate evolution of Russian undersea strategy toward hybrid manned, unmanned nuclear delivery options and toward the serialization of a platform specifically adapted to carry nuclear-powered gigatorpedoes. As the vessel proceeds through trials, naval planners and governments will have to reassess detection, deterrence, and escalation management postures to take into account an undersea capability designed to project strategic power below the surface and outside the patterns of traditional ballistic missile submarine operations.